Hello and welcome to Furious Driving. Now you may remember a few weeks ago, I bought myself a 1.8 litre Fiat Brava. However, that one was a pre-facelift automatic and as such, I didn't really fall in love with it and it hasn't really been getting driven very much. This though, is the other end of the spectrum. It's not got the big fancy 1.8. It's only got a 1.2, but it has got a rather lovely five-speed manual gearbox on it. And it's a post facelift car. So let's see if I'm a bit more taken with the 1.2 manual than I was with the 1.8 auto. So make sure you go here, like and subscribe while we have a message from our sponsors and then on with this little review and comparison. Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Bidding Classics, the online classic car marketplace with more cars added every week. Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. And Lancaster Insurance cover the Furious fleet. They are one of the biggest specialist insurers in the UK covering all areas of vintage to modern classic cars and motorbikes. Follow the links in the description below. So yes, this is the Fiat Brava, but this is a facelift version. Yes. If you've seen my recent Brava video with the 1.8 Auto, then you'll know everything there is to know about Bravas. If you haven't, the link's up here. But in short, it arrived in 1995. It replaced the Tipo, which was a monstrously successful car and platform, which spawned many, many derivatives of nothing like the Tipo, as we said. This though is based on the Fiat Type C platform, which it shares with the multipler of all things. This though is a little bit different from the one we've got at home. That is a 1.8 pre-facelift automatic. This though is the other end of the spectrum. Instead of the 1.8, it's got a 1.2. Instead of the automatic, it's got a manual. And this, being post 1999, is a facelift model. So there's a few little tweaks around the car, which is very much a blink and you miss it kind of update. But there they are. Let's take a look around. So the Fiat Type 182, this thing was signed off in 1992. It went into production in 1995, stayed in production in Europe until 2001, and in Brazil until 2003. However, but the design remained beautiful and fresh, so when they facelifted it in 1999, there really were minimal changes at best. Most of it was under the skin. Now looking around the car, we have got a few changes. Bear in mind that this is a Trofeo special edition. Trofeo, I believe, meaning trophy in Italian. So we have got chromey bits on the grill. Very exciting. We've got round fog lights, not, not present on the 1.8 SX back at home. We've got body colored inserts here on the bumper in the front, black rubbing strips on the side, and heading round the back of the car, we've still got these magnificent triple slash lights, which are the defining factor of the Brava. The Bravo, the three-door version of the car, had totally different lights, made it really quite unusual in terms of industrial design. Also on the Trofeo, we've got a spoiler, which is lacking on the SX 1.8. Now, when the Brava went into production, it came with the 1.4, 1.6 litre, and 1.8 and two litre engines. The two litre being the 20 valve, which is incredibly exciting, and the one they stuck in the coupe. However, in 1999, they dropped in the new 1.2 litre from the Fiat Punto, which gave the same horsepower, 80 or 83 horsepower, as the old 1.4 entry level, but 40 mpg now. And that rather lovely 1.2 is a lovely, light and free revving engine, which makes the car just handle and feel fresh and lively, which is nice. Although it does sometimes feel perhaps a little underpowered for such a big car, a bit like the 1.1 litre Metro replacing Rover 200 bubble of the similar time. Right, heading around the back of the car, and as on the pre face of car, we've got the amazing lights, we've got the incredible, really wide stop light just there. The actual opening handle is this kind of large lifting area just here. No actual button or release still, but use the key or the tag by the driver's wheel. Do have a nice spoiler though. And the boot, as on the pre face of the car, is absolutely vast. It goes on and on. For such a relatively compact car, it is a ton of space. And underneath the floor, we've got a full size spare wheel, which is so cool. In terms of other amenities, we've got a tiny little light just here. We've got a slot for your handbook on the right hand side and some lash down points. And that's basically it. What is quite interesting are these big metal contacts for putting power into the boot. You can see them up here on the lid as well. Interesting, the colour of this car is Azuro Sorgente. My Alpha 145 is Azuro Fantasia, which is a very similar shade of metallic light blue, which is interesting. Right, so let's take a look around the interior of the facelift Brava. Now, on my one, these door handles, have, the rubbers behind them, in fact, have just corroded to nothing. It's a really common problem on these, and the owner has replaced a couple of them, he said. Interesting how the handle pulls out like this. 
opens itself up with that big solid bit of plastic. Inside the car, inside the door, we've got a very different 1990s Ren and Stimpy-esque inspired fabric. This could be the, th the title reel of any 1990s teen TV show. Saved by the Bell would have had this as the background was a flash up neon encrusted photos of the stars such a 1990s fabric lovely shade of blue though matches the exterior perfectly on the door we've got the same fabric here it's velour so deliciously soft it's velour so it's oh so so lovely and soft got nice interesting plastic shapes all over the place got our twin electric front windows we've got our door handle interesting how this 1990s plastic the uh the surface is peeling off this is a real problem with 90s cars now that the plastics are kind of corroding and dissolving before our very eyes uh, nice solid armrest, plastic of course, and a speaker and a little uh, cubby hole down there. We've also now got big plastic kick plates with the car's name emblazoned, moulded into them. So that's a nice little update. We've also got the opener for the boot just there. And we've got seats which raise and lower in height with the extendable baton. Climbing aboard... The architecture, the shapes of the car really haven't changed too much. A lot of similarities. We've got the same cool little domed loudspeakers over in the corners. We've got the same interestingly shaped centre section just there as well. And we've got a similarly shaped radio, although we have now got an update on this, whereas with mine it's a round eject button, you have to push that and then the cassette bit flips up, although you have to push both at the same time because the mechanism is a little bit tired on mine. Slide that over and up pops the radio cassette access door. Love that. This is such a 1990s bit of brilliance. I could do this all day long. Fabulous. Love it. Okay, so on the left hand side, uh, we have now got an airbag on the passenger side, T shelf, large area, quite softly padded. You could put a few things up there, no problem. Um, interestingly, the air vent now looks like it's on a stuck on bit of plastic over the top of the dashboard panel. Large plastic bezel surrounding the dials and instruments is a semi metallic, silvery grey pl stippled plastic, which is curious. The rotating dials for raising and lowering the headlights, if you've got a, a heavy load in the back, and for dimming and brightening the dials themselves, have remained in the same place and it's a similar kind of deal with the air vent controls it's like, like large scale model truck tires that you turn in order to change it so i'm just being very excited by the fact that a v-plate volvo v70 and a jaguar s-type have just rolled into the car park uh, they've got people sat in them so i won't video them right now the instruments have remained largely unchanged got fuel gauge speedometer rev counter redlining at six and a half thousand rpm on the 1.2 and the temperature gauge all over there and in the middle, it's all, again, business as usual. Got a really cool radio, got our twin vents, we've got the hazard lights, huge switch for that. And we've got our heating and ventilation. Nothing's changed on this stuff either. And the whole dashboard arrangement is beautifully 1990s swoopy and curvy. Curving in here, that's a line from the top of the glove box. Curving down here into this shape underneath the center. There goes the Jag. And that Volvo V70, how cool is that? In the glove box itself, we have got a tiny, tiny espresso cup holder, nothing more than that, and a pen holder. And underneath the dashboard, so I'm jumping over the place, we've got the same old massive ashtray, well, massive on the outside, tiny on the inside, and 12 volt socket, beneath which you've got a phone holder, <laughs> not inductive charging, I have to say, got a coin holder. And this curious place where Italian cars so often seem to have their mirror switch down here in the centre underneath the handbrake. What is fabulous here though, instead of the terrible slush o that we've got in the 1.8 at home, we've got this la rather lovely five speed manual, which is just great. Now, as I mentioned, we've got an airbag on the passenger side. We've still got an airbag on the driver's side. This being the Trofeo has got a very nice leather steering wheel as opposed to the uh, the more plasticky, rubbery thing that I've got in the 1.8 SX. We need to do a horn test, see if that's any different. Oh, it's the same as it ever was, Pop. And you notice the curiously recessed behind this twin slash in the center of the wheel, the Fiat logo, the italic style one here in the center of the steering wheel. Up above, we've got the same Cut price Rover 75 interior light, nice big toggle switches for the interior lights and for the electric sunroof up above. And in the back, we've got the same fabulous blue 
red and stimpy fabric. Three seat belts all tucked away neatly and lots of lovely velour. Right now, let's get this thing on the road because that's what I want to see the difference between this and the 1.8 Auto. Right, let's get the 1.2 16 valve Brava manual on the road. Now instantly, this feels like a very different car entirely, even at these kind of low speeds in a 30 mile an hour zone, so keeping the speed down. It's not rapid, not to 60 on this car, it's 12 and a half seconds and the top speed is 106. It's really not particularly rapid, but it just feels, I think it's partly due to the manual gearbox being more instantaneous than the four speed auto. It's a five speed with nice ratios, but also the 1.2 16 valve is a bit more of a freer revving thing. You do feel like you have to rev it a little bit more though. 1.8 has got a fair bit of torque behind it and 113 horsepower. This is only 80 horsepower and 114 Newton meters of torque. So you need to give it a bit of a rev, drive it well, like an Italian to get the very best out of it. Uh, the turning circle is incredible and the steering is really, really wow holy moly um, sorry so many cool cars around here this is retro car heaven in this particular part of the world I've seen so many good cars the steering feels really light and very accurate as well I think partly to do with the fact that the 1.2 is a lighter engine than the 1.8 so it just feels a little bit more precise which is interesting for me, an Italian car should always come with a manual gearbox, because this isn't just my own anti-automatic gearbox prejudice coming through, although perhaps there's a little part of that. Because Italian cars are designed to be driven enthusiastically, holding on to the gears, revving the engine, having fun with it, which is something you just don't get to do with an auto. This though, with the manual, it feels like a very different car entirely. I know this car's owner is very, very fond of it, and I can really see why. A clutch on this car is a really nice weight. It's a, not too heavy, not too light. It's, uh, yeah, really well weighted. The steering wheel, like I say, is nicely connected. Feels nice and light as well. Just enough feedback. It does make you want to, to fling the car around a little bit and have a bit of fun. It feels like a slightly big punto. So yeah, in many ways, the facelift car feels incredibly similar to the pre-facelift car. Just the slightest of changes. The shape of the eject button on the radio is the biggest change that I'm noticing here in the, uh, in the cabin. At the wheel though, it does feel like a lighter, newer car for some reason. This car's only got 41,000 miles on it, which may go some way to helping that though. As I mentioned in the previous video, there were two versions, the five-door Brava and the three-door Bravo. The Brava, being the family car, was always designed and engineered to be a softer riding, more comfortable, more relaxing thing. The Bravo was the one that was a bit sharper, a bit more of the hot hatch aspect to it. This does still feel like a fairly softly sprung, gentle, delicate car that you can enjoy a nice afternoon out with a family in. Uh, but at 1.2, it does change the character so much. It, the car feels less powerful because it is. Less talky, so you've got to give it a rev to get it away from the line, which with the 1.8, you really don't have to. Partly, obviously, because it is an automatic, but also because it's just got so much more torque and power behind it. But this just feels very light at the front end in a good way. It feels like you haven't got a boat anchor dragging you towards a corner. It's a car that wants to turn in and grip and go, and it really helps the, the nice, uh, fairly neutral handling. Okay, we can go all the way up to 60 miles an hour now, so let's hope the GoPros don't fall off. So yeah, not a massive ball of fire, but you know, not bad though. Twenty, thirty, forty, 50, running out of puff now, 60, so it's a little bit loud when it's making the run to 60 but get into fifth gear and cruise at 60 and it's a fairly quiet engine, the wind noise off the A post and the, the uh, sunroof is louder than the noise coming from the engine. The brakes are nice and sharp, in fact without 
the hindrance of an automatic, which you may have noticed as if you've driven one, they tend to power you into junctions. While you've got your foot on the brake, the automatic is still adding power to the driving wheels and fighting the brakes. The brakes just feel sharper and a bit more responsive and eager in this car. But everything feels more eager in this car. gear change is just so nice and light and flicky. It's a little notchy at first till the oil warms up in there, then, then it becomes a really nice, light, flicky, manoeuvrable, just a joy to use, really. Oh man, a W124. So many exciting, cool cars today. So I hope you've enjoyed this ride out and this comparison between the 1.8 Auto, which is going to be gone in a couple of days' time, maybe even gone by the time you see this video, and this, the later 1.2. If you have, please, as always, hit like and subscribe, and join me again next time driving something completely different.